Um, I believe this is Will from New York. Will, what's on your mind, man? Hey, what's up, Ben? This is Will from New York. So the answer to that question, like how did the Tea Party rise to power and how did they stay in power and we need to mobilize and do this and that, those people didn't necessarily do that. What they were mobilized under was a pseudo-populist movement that was completely funded by millionaires like the Koch brothers. Mm -hmm. What we need on our side are liberals that will step up and dump money into a real populist movement. And if they do, and it's sustainable, then, then we can actually gain some traction and get somewhere. But besides that point, like... I don't know. I'm listening to the whole show tonight, and I'm just thinking, well, it's obvious that on the left-hand side of the mainstream media, you cannot be critical of Obama. Look at Cenk Uger. That's why he got fired from MSNBC. On the right-hand side of the mainstream media, you cannot give legitimate criticism of Obama. You have to play out false narratives that are easily defeated by anyone on the left because people on the right don't care about those things. So if you are television watching America, you don't get any real criticism and you only get oh, so you benefits didn't get the, you didn't get the, you on didn't TV. Get so when they try to sell us Hillary Clinton as an extension of him, they there's no criticism of, of him on television that's actually legitimate. So somebody that's on the left who watches CNN, Sorry. who watches MSNBC, they think, oh, you know what, an extension of Obama, that'd be freaking awesome because I've heard no legitimate criticisms of him. I've not even thought about the Wall Street bailout or TPP or all these appointments that are corporatist appointments or the ACC, which is a half measure, and they think she's the best candidate. And would yeah. you agree that she's fueled by that notion of brainwashing on both sides that are played against the middle and both wings are two wings of the same Damn bird. Well, you said a lot, man. And let me, uh, I'm going to unpack it. I got to hang up on you so I can grab this next call. Maybe one day I'll have a phone. Um, what's that thing? A, a, a phone board that I can take multiple calls at one time. Um, on the left, you cannot criticize Obama until people realize that Obama is not perfect. Right? Um, once people realize and they just accept the fact that Obama is not perfect, Perfect. I'm sorry. I'm eating dinner at 11 o'clock at night. That's part of my problem um, is, you know, once they realize that, then it opens up the floodgates of everything that he's not been perfect on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and because a lot of people have been observing him for the last eight years and waiting and waiting. And then after two years, some people jump ship. Then after four years, a lot of people jump ship. After six years, more people jump ship. And now eight years in, we're like, damn, when are we going to get this progressive president that we've been waiting on? Um, I don't think it's just a brainwashing thing. I think it's more of a political ploy that Hillary Clinton is using to shore up her support in the African-American community. Hands down. That's all it is. Because as soon as she got done with the South, Bill Clinton went out stomping on the fact that economically things have not been great underneath President Obama. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Turn down my volume. I'm sorry, Spreaker. I don't know how Spreaker. Let me know if it's been distorted all night, and I'll switch the audio. So as soon as as soon as Hillary Clinton got done with the South, she went with Bill Clinton, and he started talking about how everything economically has not been peachy keen and a, and a, and, a, and a crystal stare with Barack Obama. But yeah. she wrapped herself enough in President Obama to get the black vote. Here's from the black perspective. This is what I need: black. I need white people and Hispanic people and other and Asian and Arab and everyone else to understand from a black perspective. Take it or leave it, like it or hate it. It is fact. You cannot attack the first black president and not have a grounding in a relationship with the individual that you're you're attacking the president with. For, in, in other words, you can't just come out the blue and say mm -hmm. President Obama sucks. You know why? Because rightfully so president obama is our first black president and we are going to defend him because of the natural propensity of america to attack black people and the natural propensity of, of america to have greater expectations of black people than they do of white yeah. people and this expectation that president obama should have been jesus when in fact he was just barry obama yeah. so 
from that perspective, you have to understand you cannot attack the first black president without relationship. Cornell West has a relationship with President Obama. He can criticize President Obama because he loves President Obama. He loves President Obama so much that it pisses him off that President Obama is not as great of a president as he should be. Therefore, he brings this, in my opinion, is a principled critique of President Obama in context, but not in words. In words, he lets his words and his uh, yeah, okay. hideousness betray him. But in terms of the principle, he is a principal critic of President Obama. He does so from a position of relationship. If you don't have that relationship with President Obama, or you don't have that relationship with the black community, then you have to understand when we completely reject anyone who criticizes him, because we, we, we're looking at him through a different lens. That's number one. And if, and I can't leave number one, because a lot of people dismiss number one. If you dismiss number one, oh God, I don't have any other words. People from my church and people who knew me before, please forgive me, but fuck you. If you don't understand, number one, fuck you, because you don't understand where we're coming from. And we're trying to tell you this is just a matter of fact. Understand it and cope with it. Now, number two, we know black people know good and damn well Barack Obama has not been the president that we need him to be. That's number two. We are capable of criticizing President Obama, mm -hmm. but you better damn well do it from a principled and a relationship perspective. You cannot come with a criticism of President Obama. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is too much. Yes, it is extra. No, we won't have this conversation when we have the sixth black president, but this is the first black president. So please understand, when we're talking about President Obama, we're talking about a person who represents the struggle of the black community. And so it's not fair. It's not balanced. It's not perfect. It is what it is. Respect that. Now, all of that to say, there's plenty of criti criticisms about President Obama that should be leveled at President Obama. But I get a lot from people on the left who don't do so from this relationship, love. You don't do it from a position of love. Mm -mm. And if you don't do it from a position of love, we are absolutely gonna reject you. You know why I can, I can critique President Obama to his face? I wanna meet President Obama so I can criticize him to his face about his progressivism because I love President Obama and I love what he represents. And I love the pictures of him uh, uh, picking up a young black kid in the Oval Office. You have mm. no idea what that means to a people that have been oppressed for a very long time, not just economically, but emotionally, to have a black president in office. If you don't understand it, just take my word for it. And it's almost too late because this, this campaign with, Barack, uh, with Bernie Sanders is over. Can Bernie Sanders, could Bernie Sanders have brought more criticism to Bre President Obama? Yes, but it would have to have come from a place that I'm coming from, which is I, I really genuinely love President Obama. I'm just sincerely disappointed that he was not the president that we hoped him to be. Now, with that being said, Anoa. <laughs> Oh, you, oh know, you know, like I think somebody pointed out in the room. I, I'll, I'll respectfully um, disagree about Cornell West and his and his critique. I mean, while he may have had some valid points, I mean, he 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 went on a public temper tantrum for a couple of months because he didn't get to go to inauguration. Basically, now, I mean, not that he didn't have some valid points, but then we couple that with you know pounding around with. Uh, you know, Hillary buddy number one, Tavis Smiley, who also had his own subprime predatory lending connections. <laughs> I mean, like, it really called into question, like, some of Cornell, Dr. West's, like, uh, you know, critique. However, I think as, I think he's someone who's very passionate about the issues that he cares about, and he let that passion and emotion get the best in him. But I think that when we look at, um, I think when we look at everyone across the board, all these different no, can I, can I interject yeah. one second. I'm Go sorry. Ahead. I'm being rude. No, you're fine. It's your show. Even in the pettiness of Cornell West was not the arguments that he forwarded. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying the problem is a style over substance, right? The way he went about doing it, it turned off a whole lot of people. There are a lot of people who hold the fact that Bernie Sanders has West as his first major black surrogate, really, okay. that, that they, they've held that against him because of the way Cornell West acted and, and has acted, right? I, I agree. We do need to hold people to 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 task like you you need to hold people responsible critique you know you can't grow and change you know without critique but the way he went about it it turned a lot of people off it's the same conversation we're having right now about can you criticize the president now people are like oh but because i'm white i can't criticize him. of course you can but you really need to check and 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 and, and make sure that little bit of prejudice inside of you isn't what is what is coming out and it's really an actual valid or critique and at least, at least be willing, understand, this is, this is the thing, or I want to ask people, and I asked this question and somebody laughed on Twitter because they didn't understand, are you married? Do you have healthy relationships? Because if you have a healthy relationship, you realize that sometimes you have to understand the perspectives of someone, even if you disagree with them. Mm -hmm. And even if you disagree with everything that I just said, please understand, this is the perspective of most black Americans. So if you want to criticize Barack Obama, you better damn well do so from a perspective of love. And if you can't understand that perspective, then you got to understand when we tell you to go to hell. And everybody who's like, I love Dr. Cornell West, you know, everyone has opinions, right? Good for you. You love him. I'm not saying that I do not respect him, but you can't deny, you can't deny the fact that there was actual uh, uproar when he when he went on his little tirade, right? Mm -hmm. The 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 substance, some of the issues he was raising, a lot of the issues he was raising actually Spot on. were valid. They were valid criticism and critique. A lot of us can raise valid, but it's the way you go about doing things. And that again, you can disagree in the chat room or not. You must not talk to a lot of people the way I do, but there are people who they do hold okay, that again. Okay, hang on, hang on. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta approach this. I'm sorry, Noah. Somebody in the chat room said, why do we have to coddle black people? For the love of God, that We're sentence- We're having an honest conversation. The sentence in itself is a dismissal of the political reality that I just spent 10 minutes explaining to you. The political, re political reality that I just got through explaining to you is simply this. Because of the position that black people have had in America historically, you you have to respect that position to get any relationship. We all start from movie. Africa. I'm I, sorry. I don't understand. Listen, I got no problem. Listen, I got no problem losing losing followers over this. I'm trying to tell you. I look in my backlog of videos. I predicted this exact problem. The reason Bernie Sanders lost so many states in the South as he lost. I predicted it because I understood that there's going to be a lot. No, of, we can't just be the human race. I'm so sorry. I hate statements like that. There's a lot, and I'm going to address that one too. I saw that. One. There's a lot of non-black people who don't understand the black position, and 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 this is important. And and you can dismiss it if you want, but I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't put it to you plainly. You don't have to coddle black people. You have to understand their perspective. And this is not just black people, this is human people. Unless you are willing to, to put yourself in their position and see the world through the lenses of someone other than your experiences, you would never be able to build the relationships necessary. This election is about relationships period every election is about relationships and unless you are willing to put yourself in a position mm -hmm. to understand someone that you can't understand unless you just listen to them then you will never have the relationship necessary to convince them otherwise this is why i am able to convince people who want to vote for hillary clinton that hillary clinton is not best for them i'm able to convince them that that uh, that, that bernie sanders is best for them because i have a relationship with them and i'm able to view the world through their lenses and i'm able to bring criticism to barack obama from a position of love that's not coddling that is maturity and god for the love of 
fucking God. Do you guys not understand? There's somebody in the chat room who says, if y'all aren't paying attention, there are comments in the chat room that we're responding to right now. So maybe you guys were paying attention to what's going on instead of getting upset because you're hearing something you're not paying attention. Like that's what's going on right now because we're responding to your comments real time as we're reading them because we're both reading them and stuff like that. Listen, so, let me make it plain for them. Let me make it plain for them. If somebody came into your house and started talking and hopefully you have a good relationship with your mother. If you don't, this is not relevant. Somebody came to your house and started talking about your mama. Would you sit there? I don't care how bad your mama has been to you, but would you sit there and let an outsider talk about your mama in your house? That is the relationship that black people have with Barack Obama. We are not going to let people come from the outside and insult our brother. But if you come into our house and understand our perspective and understand our plight and then understand the relationship that mm -hmm. we have with our mother, then you will understand that we can listen and hear you if you respect that starting position. And, 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 and it's a shame. No, it's not a shame. It's a reality. This is a reality that I predicted eight months ago. This is the nuance that is necessary for America to move forward. It's worthwhile, it's worthwhile having this, this conversation, even though some of you are turned off by it, fuck it. It is important. You need to understand without relationship, you don't have the right to criticize somebody. No one is going to. No one said you can't have an opinion. This is ridiculous. I don't know who the extremists are tonight. Like, are you saying this? Are we listening? Are we using our ears? Yes. You can have an opinion. You can criticize. You can do whatever you want to do. No one, you can do whatever you want to do. I can't control you. Aren't you a grown up? I mean, but seriously, <laughs> though, like, seriously. The question was raised is word. being addressed. You know, no one is equivalent. I mean, the fact that you don't understand it, the, the, I mean, y'all are just like all over the place. Bottom Dude, line is, you know, I as we, as I, I listen to Bernie supporters, this is the first time I've ever been proud in my entire life. And I'm 60 years old of a president. Um, I was proud when Barack Obama became president. Now Definitely. I'm someone who can look beyond your stupid comments and still be a part of the Bernie Sanders movement. I'm someone who can still engage with white Bernie supporters, despite the fact that y'all say some of the most racist stuff ever. No, Bernie bros is not just a myth. It is a reality that is lived by those of us who actively engage in this point. No, Will Cahill, you, my brother, are missing the point, okay? You are missing the point of this entire conversation. So I know, again, I know, I know like, I'm bringing real time because, class. because because no because because this is the thing though right like no you can you love Cornell West that's fine but like me Stacy no we're not disabling in the chat you well, see, can respond if you want realize. to we're engaging with you y'all just want to sit there y'all just want to sit there and attack and just say nothing and they not have anyone realize. push back. That's not. I that's not that you and I disagree on Cornell West, right? We don't like. Like, did you guys even listen to Ben? Ben, Ben has no problem. Ben, I have the problem. I do have a problem with Cornell West and the way he's engaged, particularly when he went on his Poor People's Tour. With, I don't disagree with that. Yes, Hillary bots are racist too. I've had them tell me that I owe white women the right to vote. That's not the point. We have a problem with white progressives. Period. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. KP, please, y'all need to just stop, okay? Uh, Patrick wants to know, Ben, do you think that as a white man that Bernie could have gone as hard on Obama as we black folks could? No. <laughs> um, not with we would not with the way Hillary has has wrapped herself. In okay, him. okay, okay. No. So, so, so this is the other part that disappoints me about Bernie Sanders supporters is that you don't. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand the political expediency. Listen, there's some things that Bernie. Sanders would have to take the uh, 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 back seat to in order to be politically expedient to win, right? Bernie Sanders should realize that, no, just like Noah said, the reality is with Hillary Clinton wrapping herself in Obama feces and saying his shit is good for me, Bernie Sanders could not bring even a reasonable principle critique of President Obama. That's not Bernie Sanders' fault. That's Hillary Clinton's fault for being a panderer. However, it does not negate the fact that her pandering actually soothes some people. And you know what? That's just a- well, And the problem is that the, the black media elite, political elite, intellectual elite, you know, everyone is in cahoots basically with the, the, the Clinton campaign to, and no one is calling, no one from the mainstream, no one from any of these different groups, no one is calling, um, 
her out on the pandering. This dude said it best right here. Michael Michael Hicks from my, my Facebook friend. What's up, my dude? He said Cornell's poverty tour had a validity and substance, but mm -hmm. it was entirely tone deaf. It was tone deaf, and especially when again, when you're when your partner in crime is Tavis Smiley, right? Who was pro Hillary? Who hated Obama to begin with? Right? Who was also like involved in his own pushing of subprime, you know, lenders and stuff like that. It, it 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 I can't I can't listen to you like I can't listen to you all the way but that's me there are quite a few black people who actually raise um yeah. that that Cornell West issue as one of the reasons why they can't because they believe that the way Cornell West attacked President Obama is representative of of Bernie Sanders's platform on the flip side you have white people telling black people they need to listen to Cornell West but not not understanding again going back to the conversation about the monolith thing not understanding that not everybody looks at Cornell West the same way listen so, let me tell you something we are giving a a, a postmortem autopsy of of last night's primary um that no one else is going to give you no one else, I, I swear for God, you're not going to find this anywhere else. So the Benjamin Dixon show, the progressive army is the only place you're going to get the unadulterated truth, even when it means I have to use profanity when I don't really want to use profanity. Now, I want to address one other question. Um, ah, that question went up to the top. But Here, one thing I was going to say, too, though, is this this notion that, well, we were never going to win the black vote. I really I really don't think that. The campaign, and we've said this several times, I do not think the campaign, um, it's not just the black vote, right? It's the white vote too. Because when you are talking about South Carolina in particular, the white vote did not show up. The black vote was down. I think Stacey had pulled up the numbers before. The black vote, if I think I remember off the top of my head, was down like 25% from 2008. The white vote was down more like 50% from 2008. So the wh white folks didn't show up to vote either. So like, we are all been out of shape, huh? Jeff Weaver, is that his name, Jeff? Or is the it campaign Jeff? Manager? campaign yeah. manager? Yeah. What's his name? Jeff Weaver. Jeff Weaver. Um, I, I like I, I like a lot about Bernie Sanders, but their campaign missed missed a lot. The campaign did miss a whole lot, and the campaign continues to miss a lot. And we can't just keep blaming it on oh the political machine machine. Oh, it's okay. You don't have to get the West Point. You can go back and look at the video. You can go back and look at articles. I mean, there there is a lot of dissension. Like Cornell West is not. You can, it's not a definitive like everybody loves him. There are people who don't right. like him. Right. I don't. I respect it. him, but that's I don't it. like some of the way that he he, he Listen, handles let me, certain let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. The perfect example, and then I'm gonna take this caller who's been on hold for 20 minutes. I'll be a bastard if I didn't take this call. Um, the the perfect example is me telling my wife that Cornell West called President Obama the global George Zimmerman. Her initial reaction was, what the That's hell extreme. is Cornel West talking about? She was viscerally angry with what Cornel West said because George Zimmerman represents somebody that if I saw him on the street, forget about the Benjamin Dixon show, right? That's who, that's who George Zimmerman is. That's what uh, Cornel West said about him. However, me being Ben Dixon, I was able to unpack that and unravel it and explain how a lot of the people who are killed in the Middle East, a lot of the brown children killed in the Middle East are killed as a result of unprovoked uh, provocation by the Obama administration. Therefore, there is a correlation between what happens to brown children in the Middle East and what George Zimmerman did with uh, Trayvon Martin. Mm -hmm. However, Ask yourself the question, how many people are going to have that level of comfort, uh, of conversation to unpack an issue? And even after I unpacked that, my wife was still like, he had to be able to come up with something better yeah. than George Zimmerman. And it's not that you can't criticize the president. Nobody's saying that. I criticize the president all the time. I think Arne Duncan was the worst damn thing he could have done to this country. Arne Duncan screwed up Chicago before Rahm Emanuel got in there, and then he makes him education secretary. However, I'm not walking around like, oh my God, this is the worst president ever. And no, that's not just Republicans. I mean, there, there are things that you would expect to hear from Republicans coming from supposedly progressive people. And it's just that you know, it's the way you talk about stuff. I mean, you want to engage in active dialogue with people. Yep. You need to engage in active dialogue. And it All the extra stuff. I'm gonna and, or he betrayed me. He betrayed you. Like, it I don't even know what you're talking to about. This, Anoa, it goes back to, are you a mature 
adult human being. Because if you are a mature adult human being who has healthy relationships, then you realize it does not matter if you're right. It doesn't. It matters how you communicate what you are right about. I have been right on so many issues and my wife cannot accept them because I came at it as a jackass. I have been wrong on some issues, but because I've come at it as a gentleman and as somebody who understands her perspective, she can accept it. Vice versa. My wife, I mean, and it's not just me pandering to my wife. It's my wife panders to me. If you want a healthy human relationship, you have to not always have to be right. You have to be able to connect. That is for free. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a political show, but I just gave you the most important relationship information you ever could have. It is not important that you are always right. It's important that you're able to connect. Now, stop being single and go get a healthy relationship. <laughs> you're live on the air. What's your name? Comment.